Hey guys, it's Nate the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. In today's video, I thought we could make a junk journal notebook or booklet. And I also have some gift giving ideas to go along with this that I thought were pretty cool and I will share those with you. So if that sounds like something you would like to do, grab yourself a seat and let's get started. I'm going to use a file folder. This is one of the larger ones. You can get still get these brand new if you want. These are just some that I got at a um, thrift store for nearly nothing. Let me back up a little bit because yikes. What I'm going to do is slice off the edge where it hooks onto the file thingy because we don't need that part. You could use anything really. It doesn't have to be one of these. I'm just using them because I have a plethora of them hanging around and no sense in using something new if I have something old. So I'm going to decide on how big I want my little journal. I think I want my pages to be about as large as a standard size copy paper folded in half. For a US letter that is five and a half inches wide and eight and a half inches tall, but it needs to be just a little bit bigger than that so that it will, um, those pages will fit inside. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger than um, I'm gonna need it at the end, like six by nine right now, and then I can trim it down later. I will set this aside and we'll work on the pages. I have a stack of tea stained paper. It doesn't have to be tea stained, it can be regular copy paper, be anything you want. It could be construction paper, anything. But I have this pile of stuff, so that's what I'm gonna use. I will just grab out a few things. Some accounting paper sheet music. Okay, let's see what this does before I grab any more. It doesn't really have to be any rhyme or reason to it. I don't want too many blank pages next to blank pages or ledger pages next to ledger pages. I want everything to be a smattering of this here and there. So what I'm going to do I'm just going to fold everything in half, but just barely give it a little bit of a crease in the middle. It's not to give it a real stiff crease, but just so that everything will stack together well. Okay, now I can work on like stacking all this together. And of course, none of these little booklets need to be made up of random pages like this. They can all be just regular copy paper as well. But if it's going to be a quote unquote proper junk journal, then Perhaps it should have random pages, but certainly not, it's not necessary. I think that'll be plenty. All right. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm gonna put it along the edge of, this is a regular copy paper, so I, I can see the bottom edge of that. And so I'm going to just line that up. And trim that off. Put it on one of the lines of one of these grids because it kind of helps you keep everything somewhat lined up well. And then I'll just carefully trim this. I 
All right, so there is our height. Now, as far as our width goes, I cut this to be six inches wide, so it can handle quite a bit if I wanted to even leave it that width. And if I did want to leave it that width, then I would want to slice everything inside of here down to be just shy of six inches. I'm gonna try not to make this video to be too horrifically long. I know, famous last words, right? I could have also folded these edges over, but I don't know, just kind of reeked of effort at the moment. And that will fit inside there just fine. Now I just need to trim the cover down and I want the cover to be just barely taller than the pages. So I don't know, maybe two, maybe three millimeters on top and then the bottom. So that can either be measured out or marked. If you're the fly by the seat of your pants kind of person like I am. And by leaving the cover a little bit longer than, I don't know, it just kind of helps you have that little bit of leeway and you don't, hopefully you don't accidentally cut it too short, you know, like your bangs. <laughs> that day we were having that emotional moment and all of a sudden we needed bangs. Don't, don't do that, by the way. I'm telling your future self not, not to do that. If you want bangs, have a professional do it. All right, and that should be pretty darn close. And it is. So before I would either sew or glue or staple or whatever it is, however you like to add the pages, I was gonna think about the front. And I came across this piece of eco dyed paper that I had done oh, several years ago. And I thought maybe that would look cool on the front. What do you think? Does that look cool? Of course it would need to be sewn on because of course it does. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to glue or tape the whole thing, but I was going to just make it stable by putting a couple of pieces of double-sided tape so that way it doesn't shift on me while I'm sewing it. Might even do one in the middle just cuz All right. I will sew that in in just a moment. And then another thing that you should think about is if you want it to have some sort of a, I don't know, maybe a tie closure, because now would be the time to put that in. I've got some seam binding. I think either one of these would look all right. No, I like the dark one. So in order to do this, I would just want to measure out enough to where it would stretch through. I'm gonna mark where I think is the center. Hold on. This is approximately the center. Now that I marked somewhat of the center line, I fold this ribbon in half and that will give me approximately where this ribbon needs to be put for a closure. And really anything can be used. I'm gonna use tape because that's about my speed today. I'm just going to Add some tape on here, and it'll be just shy of the edges on both sides. There's my center mark that I creased. There's that. I'll kind of close this up and make sure. There we go. Just like that. Now I will tie a knot in these so that they don't ravel. You can either tie a knot or you can take some, just some regular white glue and you can dab it on the cut ends and that will seal up those threads from raveling as well. 
So whatever floats your boater. And I will go ahead and sew around the edge of this. You of course can put anything here as well as nothing. <laughs> You could take a piece of designer cardstock if you wanted some kind of something on the front. You could take a book page and put that on the front, or you can just leave it. Another thing you could do is maybe put a little book plate with maybe something behind it, or leave it empty so that if it's a gift, then the person can I don't know, put their name in it or whatever it is that they would like to put in their book plate. But for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and sew around the edge of this and get it sewn on and get that done. Montage. Now that is all sewn on and it sewed through the ribbon, which is probably good because it keeps it even more stable, at least on this side. For the inside, before I put the pages in, I thought I'd put another one of my pieces of eco dyed paper. And this one is almost the right size, not quite, but it'll have to be cut in the center which I'm going to mark it right here so I can trim that. I just want it to miss that crease mark. Let's see if it's an okay size for this side too. I mean, it should be, but no, there it goes. Okay, and I think I will go ahead and just tape this in just because I want to. Okay, and that adds some pretty decent stability, I think, to the cover. This paper that I eco printed on is mixed media paper, so oh, probably about 90 pound, I guess. And I think I will uh, round these corners off, obviously. <laughs> this means that these will have to be rounded. At least the large ones. Of course, none of that is necessary, but you know, unnecessary is. I'm gonna center these somewhat like that. And there are all kinds of things you can do. You can poke holes and tie it in. You can staple it like a magazine. Guess you probably couldn't glue it unless you know something I don't know. But I think I'll just do a three hole pamphlet stitch. That is easy. Here's a piece of paper. I'll mark a T for the top so I know where to start on my papers there. And I just wanna mark where the center is. Over here, <laughs> don't even know where the camera is. So there's the center and then I wanna mark, I don't know, Mm, half an inch or so from the edge on both sides. I will transfer those marks to the spine fold area. I'm gonna line these up and 
mark those holes, find the center. And I just will poke these through all these papers. And now all I need to do is I'll take this embroidery floss. That should be enough. And I'll use this giant needle. And you can do one of two things. You can leave the tails on the outside or you can leave the tails on the inside. I think I'll leave the tails on the inside this time. And the needle goes through the middle and then through the middle of the cover. I'm going to pull that through and leave a little bit of a tail there. And then I go down to the bottom and then through the bottom hole. And then we stretch all the way up to top and go through this top hole that we made. And then through the top hole in the cover. And now we just go back through the middle hole again, like so. Now I can take that off. And I like to make sure that the tail that we started with and then the needle that just came through, that one is on one side of this long stretch and one is on the other side. And make sure it's snug, but not so tight that it will buckle the cover. You know, it'll pull it and make it bow. And then I just tie just a regular square knot. Should be just fine. I was thinking about adding this. I think I will use tape again. probably obvious that I can't be bothered today with glue. I'm going to leave the top open just to do it. I'm going to go ahead and slip this in here. There we go. That looks pretty cool. As far as decorating on the inside goes, this was my thought process. If this is something you're gonna keep for yourself maybe, um, but you don't wanna decorate it right now, or maybe you're gonna be giving it to somebody who doesn't know a whole lot about junk journals or art journaling, um, what I thought would be really cool would be to send along or to make to go with one of these scrap samplers. And those of you that have been with me for a minute will remember these. I'll leave links down below if you want to look at those videos. Um, several years ago, I made scrap samplers and basically all it is, is just a bundle of random papers, decorative papers that could be used for making pockets or, you know, in art journaling, sometimes you'll take a piece of a page and incorporate that into your journaling whatever it is. Some of them were made with just paper, some of them were made with fabrics, and then some of them were made with like a combination of paper and fabric. So wouldn't it be kind of cool to make a scrap sampler, whether it was with paper or fabric or one of each or a combination, and either send that along to the person that you're gifting it to or save it for yourself for later, and then that way you don't need to decorate it right this minute. But it would be kind of like ready to go. Some ideas that I thought about was if you were going to be making it for yourself, you could make 12 of these and have one for each month of the year for next year. And each one would get a scrap sampler that you could have um, to go with it for later on. Sometimes you want to decorate them as you're journaling in them. You know, that's how art journaling works. You don't decorate them ahead of time. You decorate them as you write, as you go through it, whatever the mood strikes that's when you add embellishment and additions to your journal. And then what I thought would be kind of cool 
is let's say at the end of a year when you have 12 of these all filled up, you could just snip the thread and take the signature out. And then you'd have 12 signatures that you could bind into a big book. And then you'd have like the year in retrospect. <laughs> you could make your own journal annuals that way and have it all bound together at the end of the year. Then you could reuse the cover if you wanted to for the next year, just refill it with other paper, whether it's tea stained paper or white, just regular white paper, whether it's random pages like is in this one or it's just all plain paper, it doesn't matter. I just thought this might be a neat way if you're gonna keep it for yourself to go ahead and get like a bulk of the work done. If you're gonna use for monthly journals, make 12 of them. I mean, how long did this one take us? About 30 minutes or so? Even if you just had a day where you could put these together and then have them ready to go for next year. Whether you wanted to take out these signatures and bind them into a bigger book or not, you could decide whenever you wanted to. And then I also thought this would be the perfect way to um, send to somebody to introduce them to junk journaling or art journaling. You know, maybe it, this would be their, their gateway drug. You can be their junk journal pusher. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little project today and maybe it sparked a little bit of inspiration out of something that you would like to do or a gift that you would like to make. I have a craft time mystery in mind, so I'm working on that. But I hope everybody is having an excellent week, and I will see you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys!